Good evening, everyone. Students return to school in August, which is right around the corner. We told you about Alabama's plan to put students in the classroom. Tonight, we go to Starkville to find out more about how districts in Mississippi are preparing as each school district is coming up with its own path for return. Our Quentin Smith joins us live in the studio with the details. Yeah, Joey, the district is still working on its plan, so nothing is set in stone as of now. But traditional, online, even hybrid classes, everything is on the table. And right now, the school district is considering which options to implement. This is how classrooms in the Starkville Octibaha Consolidated School District typically look. Celebrate Christmas. Packed with many students sitting close together. But when classes start back in August, things will look a little different. Superintendent Dr. Eddie Pazant says class sizes could be shrinking to help students and teachers practice social distancing. The number of students that will be able to fit in the classroom will uh, vary based on the size of the classroom and the age of the students. Uh, you know, our, our older students, you know, will look at fewer Whereas our younger students, uh, we should be able to get, you know, anywhere from, you know, two to four more students in a classroom. Pazant says they're also considering having classes on Mondays through Thursdays and alternating the days students will come to class. We're um, looking at hopefully getting our K-5 sc uh, students, at least getting them in for the full week that we're offering classes. And then for our secondary level students or 6 through 12, uh, we're looking at some other options such as uh, AB grouping. However, Passat says he understands that some people may not feel comfortable returning to school. That's why they're proposing another option, online courses. There'll be some, you know, live uh, live face, to live Zoom or virtual mm -hmm. uh, class meetings. There will be some where where teachers have recorded lessons and and then have assignments that uh, attach to those lessons. Things are still in the planning phase, and district leaders want to know what parents think. That's why within the next few weeks they'll be sending out surveys to get feedback. We'll be developing our plan between now and the next two weeks or so. Uh, and then we'll get some input uh, beginning of July to try to finalize uh, some plans uh, by early to mid-July. Now, for those who choose to come back to campus, Pazan says they'll check temperatures of students and staff each day before class. Now, at this time, the district is considering using Friday as the day they deep clean all school buildings. Pazan says they'll continue to update students and parents on their plan throughout this entire process. The Mississippi Department of Health reports 608 new COVID-19 cases over the past two days. The Health Department did not release numbers yesterday. The new cases bring the state's total to just over 19,000. The majority of cases are in the 18 to 29 age range. 13 deaths are being reported today. One of those is in Union County. Statewide, there have been 881 coronavirus deaths. The health department estimates about 13,000 people in the state have recovered from the virus. Fighting crime is tough enough. Fighting crime during a pandemic has its own challenges. Columbus police are using $37,000 from a U.S. Bureau of Justice assistance grant to help meet those challenges. Throughout, uh, through the grant, officers can purchase protective gear in response to COVID-19. Plans include air quality units for police vehicles, crime scene barriers, and two drones. Police Chief Fred Shelton says this will help officers safely respond to calls where there's a threat of exposure. We're going to be, buy, be able to buy fresh air mobile units to put in our vehicles, which is going to clean, which is going to uh, take contaminants and pollutants out of the air. In addition, there's a future on where it can disinfect the car. Now, Shelton says officers must attain a drone pilot license before operating the device. Free masks will be available for Lowndes County residents tomorrow. The masks will be given out at six different locations. Those places and times are on your screen. Non-medical and also uh, cloth mask will be available. The Mississippi Department of Health recommends wearing a mask in public where it is hard to maintain social distancing. 
Um, we just want to tell people that, you know, this is just, we want them to understand that while the mask giveaway is because we are still in the midst of COVID-19. I know it seems like when you watch TV or see other things, people out in public without masks, well, we're still in saying yes. One of the CDC guidelines is that we really, really need to protect not only ourselves, but protect, protect others from the, from the COVID-19. The masks are being provided by the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency. Today's update on the state's efforts in combating COVID-19 focused on mental health of Mississippians. State leaders say one in five Mississippians experience some type of mental illness. That includes depression and anxiety. Governor Tate Reeves urged the people of the state to not give up. For people feeling down or anxious, leaders made a few suggestions to help ease some of the load. Well, sometimes we may need to step back from social media and, and all of the stories about the pandemic and give ourselves a break. Taking care of our body and connecting with your faith. Also trying to eat healthy, well-balanced meals and exercising regularly. And connecting with others. Governor Reeves spoke about um, social distancing. It has saved uh, numerous lives. But at the same time, social distancing does not mean disconnecting with everyone. There are several resources available if anyone is struggling mentally or emotionally, such as hotlines and online resources. You can find more at mentalhealthms.com. If you've been missing movie night during the shutdown, there is some good news on the horizon. Malco Theaters plans to begin reopening its locations starting Monday. In the first week, the curtain will be coming up at six of the chain cinemas, including four in Mississippi. One of those is the Tupelo Common Cinema Grill. For information on showtimes, you can go to the webs, the uh, theater's website, rather. We have plenty of warm weather, plenty of sunny weather coming our way. You may want to grab a milkshake at some point over the next seven days. That's a good-looking strawberry one right there. The rain, for the most part, is staying away here, so what you see is what you're going to get. A lot of blue sky. This is how it looked earlier in Vernon at Durham's Pharmacy. You can see the trees moving around. We had some wind gusts today between 20 and 30 miles per hour. The wind relaxing a little bit right now. We are still very warm, 100% sunny right now, but the air is dry, so it's going to be a great evening if you are planning on any outdoor activity. Perhaps you are gathering around the backyard barbecue. By 8 and 9 o'clock, we'll be cooling down into the 70s. And lows tonight, upper 50s, the low 60s once again. Quite comfortable, much like this morning. But we have more heat for tomorrow. Upper 80s to around 90, still a lot of sunshine. Your full forecast, just a few minutes. A search underway for two suspects in Tupelo after an afternoon shooting leaves one man injured and happened near the Scottish Inn near Blair Street and North Gloucester around 345 this afternoon. Tupelo police say the suspects reportedly got into a cab, eventually getting out and running off near East Main Street and Canal Street. A police canine unit searched the area of Canal Street, but so far those suspects have not been found. The extent of the victim's injuries is unknown right now. The cab driver says everything just happens so fast. I picked up some folks at uh, Dollar General and was taken them to Clannersville and I got a call to stop. And when I stopped, they jumped out. And, and the police come up, had the sirens going, and, and I pointed towards the way they went and they, they went after them. Once police get an accurate description of the suspects, they will release that information. Columbus police are still searching for three masked men who allegedly kidnapped and shot another man. The shooting happened this past weekend. Columbus Police Chief Fred Shelton says the incident started Saturday night in the 2700 block of 6th Avenue North. That's where the victim told officers he was thrown into a vehicle by the suspects. The car was an older model black Chevrolet Impala. The victim was shot in the leg before being thrown out of the vehicle near the intersection of Waterworks Road and 14th Avenue North. Shelton says the victim is currently not cooperating with officers. If you have any information, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. CPD is also investigating a shots fired call on 14th Street and 6th Avenue North uh, from this week. No one was injured and no property was damaged. Tupelo police need help identifying a fraud suspect. Police say the man in this picture is suspected of stealing and using a stolen card. 
The cart was used at a Tupelo business on June 6. Anyone with information on this person is asked to call Crime Stoppers of Northeast Mississippi. Area car dealers are trying to get back on the road to recovery. We find out what could be driving sales when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic slammed the brakes on auto sales, but things may be cranking up again. Our Chris Bolton joins us live in Columbus with more on whether business is in neutral or shifting into drive. Chris? Joey, the last couple months have definitely been tough on the auto industry. However, the stimulus has gone a long way to helping increase and boost car sales for dealerships. But there has been some money coming in that, you know, you knew where it came from. It came from the stimulus, and, of course, that's a big boost for everyone. The coronavirus pandemic has led to the worst financial crisis since 2008. So it's surprising when local dealers say auto sales have spiked since the economy's slight resurgence. And we've gone from 13 million new vehicles down to 5 million. So that shit, we've sold them, we're selling them, but we've not been resupplied. Bill Russell, longtime Ford dealer, says sales are in fact on par with 2019. Compared to last year, our new business is almost identical. And our used business has actually improved. Our used business is better, our new business is about the same. Now that people have received stimulus relief, dealers believe customers now have the freedom to handle some needed auto work. We've been selling uh, some extra cars probably because of that. And we've also done a lot of repair work that people have been putting off and didn't have the money for. And they've said, I've got my stimulus money and I'm going to spend it. And I'm going to get new tires or, you know, I'm going to fix up my car and do things that they've been putting off because of a lack of funds. But Alan Jones, owner of Alan Jones Used Cars, is fully aware that business can shift at any moment. If it turns the other way and things start shutting down again, you could definitely, there's been days that I could tell there was a difference, you know, and especially in our repair business because just the people wasn't getting out. They didn't feel comfortable getting out in the public. Russell and Jones are both optimistic that the current sales will continue for the rest of the year. Reporting in Columbus, Chris Bolton, WCBI News. And maybe if you bought a convertible, it was a good day to be out. Hot. The sun's very potent. This is true. You know, I Sunscreen. Used to, I used to have a, a convertible boy. Didn't take long. Especially up there. No kidding. And <laughs> I, had to borrow, I had to borrow a hat today for my afternoon walk because we don't want to burn that. All right. Maybe a road trip to Nashville, Atlanta, New Orleans tomorrow. Look at that. Plenty of sunshine, warm temperatures here in the southeast. Your full forecast is next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Let's head on over to Ackerman for our Saturday forecast. We start out with a mix of sun and clouds on our weekend. Probably more sun than clouds, but a chilly 59. Boy, get up early. Take advantage of the great weather. Calm, cool, refreshing by the afternoon. That sun blazing upper 80s to around 90, but it will be a dry air mass. So over here in Choctaw County, uh, not too many problems, but it will be warm and sunny all day long where and French camp included in that. The UV index at 11 in the extreme category, plenty of sunscreen, hats, lightweight, light colored clothing, etc. all weekend long into next week too. Let's do a sky cam tour. Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon, we talked about how breezy it was earlier today. Now the wind is relaxing below 10 miles per hour. Still a lot of sunshine out there in Tupelo, 86 degrees. Old Glory still Flapping around in that breeze from the north at about 9 miles per hour. For you in Columbus, sunny in 85, the wind at 13. And down in Louisville, Mississippi, 86, the wind about 10 miles per hour. So it is gorgeous. Take advantage of it, mid-80s across the region. But that's the actual temperature. Let's flip on the heat index. And about the same. So usually when we show you the heat index this time of year, these will be in the 90s and triple digits. But the air is very dry. And you can tell that we don't have any clouds around here. So that's the dry air mass in place. And in general, that's going to be the rule of thumb overall for the next seven days. With a few exceptions, we'll show you that, though. Tonight, it looks great. This evening, temperatures cooling down into the low 60s and upper 50s by tomorrow morning, as we just talked about. So if you're up early, take advantage if you can. As we get into tomorrow midday, mid to upper 80s return, flirting with 90 in the afternoon. There will be some clouds out there. Those will tend to go away tomorrow night. Low 60s are upper 50s early Sunday as we get into Sunday afternoon. Still warm, mid to upper 80s, flirty with 90 in some spots. Now, 
We have a frontal boundary that will try to sneak on in from the northeast. We'll probably see a few more clouds. I don't think we're going to have any rain. We're keeping it out of the forecast. And essentially, Saturday through all of next week, rain chance is basically zero here. Here's your accurate weather 70 forecast. And what you see is what you're going to get. Mostly sunny tomorrow, 89 degrees. Just a few more clouds as we get into your Sunday, 89 as well. A little bit cooler Monday and Tuesday behind that frontal boundary. So we're going to nudge it back down into the mid to upper 80s. Perhaps a little bit cooler in some spots. Overnight low staying very comfortable through Wednesday. Low 60s and some upper 50s. That's a nice change of pace. A few nights ago, we had lows in the upper 70s. By the end of next week, still mostly sunny, but back up to the lower 90s. All right, thanks, Keith. The 2020 Major League Draft was a record setter for Mississippi State. We recap a big 48 hours of baseball next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. As athletes return to college campuses and COVID-19 testing greeting athletes upon return, more and more athletic departments are finding out the impact of the disease. Mississippi State joining the list of SEC schools with reported cases. Four Bulldog athletes tested positive with the coronavirus in their return to campus. 24-7 Sports' Paul Jones was the first to report. The athletes were asymptomatic and will self-quarantine for 14 days. SEC schools such as Alabama, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Auburn, among others, have also reported positive tests of COVID-19. Unrelated to the SEC, the University of Houston has suspended all voluntary workouts due to six players testing positive with symptoms of COVID-19. A big development as college football tries to get back on track. The 2020 MLB Draft is complete. Mississippi State setting a program record over the course of the five-round event. Justin Foscue and Jordan Westberg going in the first round. The first Bulldogs duo to do that since Will Clark and Rafael Palmero did that in the first round in 1985. Even with the game of baseball left in limbo due to the pandemic, the two Diamond Dogs are looking forward to their next career step. I think scouts can only do um, so much when looking at a game, they watch the way you play. Um, but to get to know to know who someone is as a person and how what they're how they're wired, um, I think is another thing. And I think that's where I um, separate myself from other people with my drive and my self motivation. Um, so I guess that they they liked what they saw and they listened to. The Orioles were one of the last teams I heard from. Uh, I think I heard from them that Friday before the uh, the week of that draft, and um, you know it was over Zoom Zoom call, which is kind of what every team was doing, but. To have them be the last team that I talked to and then to have the opportunity to be drafted by them um, just made it special. It made it feel like um, they were thinking of me, you know, that whole entire week leading up to the draft. A total of 26 SEC baseball players drafted over the past two days. Vanderbilt leading the way with four selections. Then Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Texas A&M tied for second most with three apiece. Ole Miss with two selections on Thursday, the SEC leading the way, the most draft picks of any conference in college baseball. With the shortened draft, the second lowest amount of high school players were drafted this year. But one of those who did get the call, Mississippi State commit Blaze Jordan. Jordan selected in the third round by the Boston Red Sox. The DeSoto Central Star says he'll take the next few days to make the decision. It's going to be a difficult decision. I mean, I'm in a great situation either way. I mean, Mississippi State's a great, I mean, any, any kid will love to go there too. But, I mean, every kid's dream is to play professional baseball. So, uh, make the decision in a couple of days and see what happens from there. Jordan's draft slot was valued at $666,900. The MLB has yet to come to an agreement as to when or if the 2020 season will begin. That's it for sports. We'll have the last your forecast coming up after the break. Really do have a great evening of weather here on our Friday. Sunny skies. Temperatures are warm, mid-80s, yes, but the humidity factor is very low. Tomorrow we will just duplicate what we had today. Upper 80s to around 90 degrees. Lots of sunshine across the board here as we get into the first part of the weekend. That trend is going to continue for Sunday into next week. Perhaps a little bit cooler at times, but overall, Joey, the seven day is looking like the best it's been all year. Yeah, not a bad seven day at all. We dry out a little bit, feels a little bit like summer, but not completely like Correct. summer. Correct, yes. Hot, but not oppressive. Uh, hey, we'll take it while we can. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Keith. Thank you for joining us, everyone.